Hello everybody, our next camera is the Nikon Light Touch Zoom 120 ED AF and this is also the QD quartz state version. Nikon on their website calls it the world's smallest lightest 3.2x zoom compact camera with a sliding lens cover. That's a bit of a stretch to make it the somethingest camera. It was one of Nikon's last compact film cameras. has a 38-120mm uh, zoom, passive autofocus. Uh, the lens is seven elements in five groups. It is not a bright lens. It's f5.3 at 38mm and f10.5 brightest at 120mm. So this was from the era where everybody was counting on 400 speed film not being as grainy as it used to be to make things fall together. The shutter is probably two seconds to one five hundredth of a second. It's nowhere in the manual and I couldn't find it online. That's based on a review of this camera's successor, the 130 ED. I'll put a link to that view down in the text below. It reads DX encoded film from 50 to 3200, like a lot of these compacts, it loads in the right, and then you bring the leader over to this orange bit, and it does the rest. Since the shutter is also the aperture, it's a little tricky to find out the smallest aperture, um, the minimum f-stop. It seems to be f16 at 38 millimeters, and F32 at 120 millimeters. Um, that's based on the EV range that's in the specs in the manual and assuming a highest shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. Um, like the Mu series from Olympus, the lens cover is the on off switch. Uh, because it's a zoom, you gotta give it that little pause before you finish shutting it. <clears throat> the manual calls it the quartz date. Uh, QD model. It's, QD's nowhere on here. It does say it up here. I just have that function disabled. I almost never use it. The quartz date version does also come with a panorama function with this little slider right here. Like a lot of the cheaper uh, panorama cameras, it just brings shutters down and up um, at the film plane and also in the viewfinder. The viewfinder, it does have a built-in diopter, it's plus or minus two, that's kind of nice. has an anti-fog viewfinder, I'm not real sure what that does, but I have a tendency to fog windows, so that might be good for me. Uh, the viewfinder does zoom with the lens. Um, there's not a lot of information in it, there's fixed parallax marks, and then a little rectangle in the center that's your autofocus spot. It does lock autofocus and auto exposure with a half press. On the back by the viewfinder, there's an autofocus light, the green light, and if it's steady, it's got the lock. If it blinks slow, about 2 hertz, you're too close, and if it blinks a little faster at 8 hertz, it just can't lock the focus for whatever reason, shooting through glass, something like that. The film is auto load, auto advance, and automatic rewind. It does have this recessed button on the top and this little nipple on this plastic piece on the strap for doing mid-roll rewind. I don't know if it leaves the film tongue hanging out. I've only shot the one roll through this so far. Flash has pretty standard modes. Um, auto, off and set the focus to infinity. Just force off, force on and then auto slow, that's your slow sync with the slow shutter and pop in the flash. One thing that's odd is the red eye reduction shares the button with the self timer or it also enables an optional uh, RF remote, might have been infrared, anyway the remote. Um, so it's red eye and then it leaves the red eye icon on and shows you the self timer <coughs> or remote the self timer is 10 seconds. I only used it once, I think, when I was really dragging the shutter with the flash disabled.
The flash is good for 0.75 to 4.1 meters at 38 millimeters and 0.8 to 2 meters of 120. Um, this thing is not a bad point and shoot, you know, with a kind of middling shutter and a really slow lens, but it's handy. And I didn't want to do a new point and shoot, another point and shoot, so soon. But I've had a lot of fails lately. Um, some bellows leaks, old film, old chemicals. Anyway, this was what I had ready to go. Took it on a recent trip to LA. And it was nice to have a point and shoot for that kind of a trip. It's kind of hard to lug a tripod and an old bellows camera around. Although it's funny, the looks that you get. That you get. It's a bit hungry because everything's power. Power zoom, the flash power pops up, motor transport, everything. So it uses a CR123A lithium battery. Little stubby 3 volt guys. And it's power hungry, so make sure you've got a nice fresh battery in it if you get one of these. Um, I'm going to try and get uh, something a little more interesting together for a Halloween video, and I will see you then.